So hello and welcome everyone to our next interactive live session, a part of Handmade in Britain, the interactive craft fair, held from Tuesday the 23rd of March to Sunday the 28th of March 2021. Um, the interactive craft fair is a wonderful mix of exhibitor live sessions, workshops, demonstrations, live chatting with our exhibitors, um, along with the chance to buy direct from all of our makers featured on interact.handmade um, in Britain.co.uk. Um, so we are joined um, by Annabella um, Zagora, who is a fabulous jeweler, and she's going to be talking um, in discussion actually about contemporary metal smithing, curving metal sheet into jewelry. Now, we will be sharing a video this afternoon, so please make sure that you've got really good access to your volume um, so we can turn it up so you can listen um, as she does her demonstration. Okay, so Annabella, good afternoon and welcome to Handmade um, Interact. Um, it'd be lovely actually for us to get to know a little bit about your professional background and that inspiration that's kind of brought you to the collection, you know, that, that we see here with us. Yes, so um, I actually uh, have a background in philosophy. Um, I moved here to Durham, North Carolina to um, pursue a PhD in philosophy. And while I was doing that, a friend of mine um, showed me some earrings that she had made. And I thought that was amazing to make um, your own earrings. So um, I asked her to show me how she did it. And then I started learning more and more techniques. And at some point uh, in that journey, I discovered the work of uh, Michael Good, who is um, one of the grandmasters of anti-classic raising. Um, and that's how I really, really wanted to study uh, anti-classic raising with him uh, and I managed to do so. So that's how I learned the technique that uh, we are going to talk about today. Fabulous. So with, with your collection um, that you've got, um, have we got um, anything exciting um, there to, to see? Because you're going to share a video um, with us. Do you have do you have um, that piece, or are we kind of looking? Yes, so the, um, the video will be showing actually how to make the earrings that I am wearing right now, um, and I have other pieces. Uh, all of the pieces in my collection here are made using um, that technique. Um, that um, so we could just um, start with a video if you like and then um, I will show you more pieces. Welcome to my studio. I would like to show you how to make these minimalist earrings using a contemporary metal smithing technique called anti-clastic raising. These earrings have a very simple oval shape that you can see here. The difference between this oval and the earrings is a curve running alongside the middle of the earrings. So you can see here the difference between the flat oval and the curved oval. Now the way to achieve these three-dimensional curves in metal is by hammering a sheet of metal against hooks like the one I have here. If you don't have these um, stainless steel hooks at home, you can simply carve out the curves that you want in a piece of wood or in a piece of plastic like I have here. The hammer I'm going to use is a plastic hammer and that will not leave any marks on the metal which means you're, en you're gonna end up with a smooth piece of jewelry but if you'd like to have some texture on your jewelry then you can use metal hammers like this one. So for this design we're going to place the oval diagonally on the hook. If you were to place it like this you would simply create a circle out of this but we don't want a circle we want a nice twist so we're gonna put it diagonally and you can start hammering in the middle. You can see how you are shaping the metal and you want to go with the hammer around the hook. 
and you are pulling the metal and twisting it slightly as you are hammering. Then we can switch to the other side, place it in the middle and then hammer in the middle while twisting, while doing this twisting motion. Um, if you want a deeper curve in the metal, then you can move on to another hook that has a more pronounced curve here and you can repeat this process of hammering on this other curve, this other hook. And you can do the same for the other earring. So one thing that's essential with anti-clastic raising is to start first with very soft curves that you create in the metal and then move on to deeper and deeper curves. Um, so for example if you wanted a very pronounced curve like I have here you cannot simply start by placing the metal on this um, it will not get a nice um, smooth curve you're just gonna wrinkle the metal so always have to start with very soft large curves and then work your way gradually towards more pronounced curves and with this particular pair of earrings um, this is all I want I want a very subtle twist a very subtle curve I don't want to create anything too dramatic but you can take it to a deeper curve and create a more dramatic shape if you like um, and uh, all you need to do for these is to um, drill or punch a hole uh, on the top of the earrings and uh, they are ready to wear so you can see that by hammering we have um, a very smooth appearance here you can polish it if you like it even shinier or you can take a, a piece of sandpaper and uh, sand it down to give it a um, matte appearance like in the one I have here and so you can also play with different kinds of finishes for your earrings and uh, one thing that I love about uh, this technique is that it invites a lot of um, experimentation so i have shown you one way you can place the metal and a way you can move it while you're hammering to create a certain shape um, you can explore and find uh, many other ways of moving the metal on the hooks and placing it there to create the shapes that you like thank you That was lovely. Thank you so much, you know, for, for filming that um, in, in advance there. It was really interesting, actually, to see just some of the techniques and some of the, kind of what you refer to as the hooks, because I didn't realise, I thought you could go straight in and kind of do a very, very tight twirl. But of course you can't, you have to, you have to work up to it. How labour intensive um, is that for you? Um, it can be very, very labor intensive, especially if you want to create some um, very dramatic curves, uh, like I have in this piece here. Um, maybe you can see better if I put it up here. Um, so in the video, I have shown the, the first steps. Uh, but if you would like to have some very sharp turns um, and some very deep curves, um, then you have to go through that process multiple times uh, and make sure that you guide the metal in the direction that you like. Um, and one thing that I really like about um, the technique I showed you is that it really invites a lot of experimentation and um, the collection that I have for the um, um, show is um, actually the result of experimenting with this technique, the result of um, simply placing the metal on those hooks and starting to hammer and trying to see where that leads me and how far I can um, push the metal, how far 
um, how deep the curves, how um, much of a twist I can get. So for example, in um, this piece over here, you can see that the metal is actually curved around itself. Um, so that's a very, very deep curve. Um, you start with a sheet of metal and in the end, it will fold um, onto itself. Uh, and that is also very labor intensive. So I can see those twists, you know, running through throughout the collection. What, what inspires you? Is it actually, you know, the twist or are you looking at kind of natural formations like rivers and rocks? You know, what, what kind of goes in behind? What's a starting point, I should say, you know, for some of those pieces? So sometimes I start with a certain image that I have in mind uh, that comes from nature. So for example, in, um, in this piece, um, I wanted to recreate, not sure if you can see very well. Um, there was a, a very interesting flower blooming, uh, just opening, barely opening in my garden. And I wanted to capture that moment where it's just starting to unfold um, and the mystery um, that comes with that moment. So uh, that piece was inspired by um, that flower that I saw and um, I had that in mind when I started working and I tried to make that. Um, I have another piece here, for example, that um, is inspired by waves in the ocean. And so these, um, this technique is very useful if you want to mimic those curves that occur naturally in nature, like the curves of a flower or the curves of waves in the ocean. Um, but sometimes um, I don't start with anything in particular in mind. Uh, sometimes I just like to take a piece of metal, cut out a shape, and just start hammering. Um, and that's a process that's very interesting to me, that I don't have any preconceived image of what I would like to make. I simply let, let my hands work, um, and I work very intuitively, and I see where the hammering takes me, uh, and I see the, um, the shapes that unfold in that process. Um, and in the end, I'm still drawn to uh, things from nature. So uh, my hands guide me towards images from nature, even when I don't have that planned um, ahead of time. Um, so, but in, in those instances, I don't try to mimic anything in particular from nature. And I really like um, abstract shapes that might be reminding the viewer of something from nature, but don't uh, depict anything in particular and that are um, more open to interpretation as to what they could be. Um, one of those shapes would be um, this one over here. Um, that I think is similar to something you would find in nature, but it's not quite clear what it is. Um, or I have this piece here that I created simply by starting to hammer without any um, thought as to what I was going to make. But uh, at some point in that process, it started to look very much like a rose. Um, and this is a piece that a lot of people are actually uh, drawn to um, because it's, in its essence, it's a spiral, um, but because of all the twists and the turns in the metal, it ends up looking very much like a rose. And I have this piece, um, once I have created the shape for this piece, um, because it reminded me of a rose, I placed um, stone in the middle. Uh, in this case, I have a beautiful blue appetite in the middle that uh, further enhances that um, image of a rose. Um, and I can make that design um, in different um, sizes 
and with different stones. It looks very nice um, here with a garnet in a larger size or here with an orange sapphire also in a small size. It's almost, it's almost like to me, you're kind of capturing movement because of course we saw at the start, you wanted to kind of capture something, you know, the flower kind of opening on there. And then the waves, when you're showing the waves with the ocean and we could see that and then those kind of, you know, very kind of bulbous pearls, but it did still feel like moving. That's kind of how I feel when I look in those kind of twists. But what's really um, interesting is actually how the different stones that you're using bring either warmth or coolness to, you know, to the piece as well. And we've had a great question actually that, that's come in because of the technique that you use in terms of kind of being very free and letting the material lead you. Um, you know, how um, the question here is, you know, if you don't have an image in mind at the start, how do you replicate that same idea? Because of course, if somebody's fallen in love with a piece, and you think, oh, I'm, you know, I want to try and do something. What do you do? Do you have, do you draw it? Do you, do you take a picture? What, or do you just kind of say, do you know what? No, I can't replicate it fully, but I'm going to kind of, you know, kind of start again and it is going to be a little different. How, how do you like to work them? So that's a great question, actually. And uh, in many cases, I do end up with uh, one of a kind pieces. So for example, this piece that, um, I have shown you earlier um, here. Um, it's a one of a kind piece. I cannot recreate that exact same um, shape. Uh, I might recreate something maybe similar, but it's um, not going to be even close. Um, or with um, this piece over here, this is another one of a kind piece. Um, and the reason why I would not even try to recreate this particular piece is because I think um, what's interesting about the, this piece is the fact that it suggests the flow movement of a river. Uh, for me, uh, this reminds me of a confluence of two rivers. And um, if I try to uh, recreate that, I might end up with a shape that's similar to that. But because it's not exactly the same shape, it's not going to capture the same feeling. Um, it, so often when I have tried to recreate a piece, um, in the middle of it, I end up going in a very different direction because uh, I feel like the metal is guiding me into a different direction because um, I feel like I, it's not going to express that same feeling as the original piece. Uh, and so it, um, it's not really a good direction to go into. And then I go to wherever I think at the moment that um, whatever feeling or uh, movement, I think at the moment that that particular piece is going to be uh, able to express. Now, in other cases with um, more uh, simple shapes like these um, rose-like spirals, um, these pieces I can recreate, um, they are all unique. Uh, they're not going to be exactly the same, um, but you have seen in the pieces that I have shown you, I've shown you uh, three different pieces um, that they are um, sufficiently similar that um, that notion of a rose uh, is transparent in all of them. Um, so there I can say, to a potential customer, I will make you this piece. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it is going to be um, a very similar design. Uh, and it's, um, I can say the same about um, this piece with the ocean waves here um, with the pearl that um, this one, it took me a while to, to try to recreate the same curves uh, that suggest the, um, the movement of the ocean, but I was able to do it. So that's another piece that I can replicate. 
You've spoken, you've actually kind of picked up kind of two, you know, two kind of key points because the way you speak about your work, it's very emotive. Emotion plays a, a big part. Is that is that a, a key process for you? Do you kind of listen to how how you feel or do or do circumstances around you actually, you know, affect, you know, the way that you work? Um, I think both of those things are true, and uh, it's very true that in um, when I make a piece, um, when I don't have an image of something in mind, it is a feeling that guides me. It is um, the metal as it starts forming in a certain shape, it suggests something to me and it often it suggests uh, an emotion and then I try to um, move it to form it in a way that will further uh, express that emotion that uh, that it suggests to me at the time um, and I think that's what makes many of these pieces also appealing to viewers and to customers the fact that when they see them they um, they can relate to that emotion they can yeah. um, sense Okay, so so kind of because also there's another thing which obviously must govern, you know, the size and the shape, and that's you know the the size of the piece of the material that you start off with. Because I'm presuming you know you're going to be stretching it, but you know how how far does that go? And we actually had a question earlier, um, a slight a, a little technical one was actually what what kind of thickness are you using first of all? So what's the thickness of your material? And, you know, if we're, if you're pushing it and pushing it and pushing, is it so far? When does it snap? Has that ever happened to you? Um, it doesn't snap, but it can harden to the point where you cannot work on it. You cannot work it anymore. And so you do have to keep that in mind. Uh, I use 24 gauge. Um, so it's a relatively thin metal. Um, and the advantage of working with that is that um, the pieces, even very large pieces like this one or very large earrings like these end up be being very lightweight because you don't need very thick metal to, um, to work with. And so I can barely feel the earrings that I am wearing, um, even though they are very big. Um, this technique, because it involves so much hammering, what happens in that process of hammering that thin sheet of metal is that the metal hardens. So the more you hammer it, the harder it's going to get. And um, that's why it will very much retain its shape. So you can, you know, you can really bang these pieces and you can try to push them and they will not, um, they will not lose their shape because that hammering will um, force the metal into a shape that uh, when I'm done with hammering it, you cannot really, uh, you cannot really move it that much anymore. But yes, I do end up, um, you know, in this process of experimentation, you do end up sometimes with um, stuff that you have to melt uh, later on. Well, that's always kind of like the, the fun bit. You never know what's going to come out of it. But then it's also that chore of if it hasn't worked, you have to kind of start start all over again and you kind of never never know what you're going to end up with. Um, Annabelle, we're coming to the end of our session. Um, I've so enjoyed, you know, looking looking through your collection. And, of course, um, you know, for everyone watching, I popped um, Annabella's, you know, link to her exhibitor live shop. Um, so do have a look um, after the session. So, Annabella, before we go, thank you so much um, for your time. Um, as you heard, Annabella is over, um, are you in North Carolina, did you say? Are you over, over so it's 11 a.m. over there, and it's, well, it's 11.30 over there, it's half past three here. So, thank you very much, you know, for, for joining us. It's been, it's thank been wonderful. Thank you so much for having yeah. me. I very much enjoyed it. <laughs>